Hello and welcome back to the second episode in looking into the hardware API of Bitwig Studio. And in this second part, I'd like to look at the simulator, how it works and how you activate it. First thing you need to do is you need to activate it, to unlock it. And it's written down in the hardware surface documentation, how to do that. If you flip over to the control service API documentation and go to the hardware surface class, description and scroll down a bit you see here the description how you activate that I just noticed here this path is a little bit crippled but we know what to do you need to create a file in Bitwix local data at least here on Windows so your user path the app data folder is normally hidden so you need to show that first local and their Bitwix studio this is where all the configuration files of Bitwix studio are stored as well well as the log files which I told you about in a previous tutorial just create a text file name it config.json in lower capitals and in that file you simply need to add uh, this one line extension dash dev double points and true so that's it if you then start Bitwig and go to the controller section you can add any controller which supports that for example let's pick here my push to support you can add the controller and I did not have connected it currently which is not an issue because I can now simulate this this file we created unlocked some commands here so if you right click now here on the header you get this new simulate device connected command and clicking that we create a second instance with simulated MIDI input ports and it also even simulates the USB connection. We have now a simulation running. Question is where is the simulator? Again you can click here on the header of the running version header and now there is another entry which means show simulated hardware GUI. So if you select that you will get now finally here into the simulator and as you see it looks a lot like the push 2 and you can also use it like the push tool so we can here play notes and you can also change modes here for example here we go here into the sequencer and you can create a new clip and here the sequencer starts running you can start entering notes and so on so you can actually use it like the normal device only a little bit of a limitation is if you need button combinations you need to have a touch surface because I can with the mouse I can click on the shift but now with the mouse I cannot click on a second button so this is a bit of a problem, but if you have a touch device, you can use it like the real deal. So you can with one hand uh, press the shift and with another one press another button. Word of warning here, there is still a bug. Uh, sometimes if you resize the window, you can resize it. Bitwig crashes hardly and uh, so be a bit careful to always store your work if you make uh, changes to such a simulator device before <laughs> trying to resize the window. Okay, so how do we do that? How can we create such a software? sophisticated device let's just remove that and let's add our controller we did in the first part of this new series about the hardware API so here in MOS I created API test 2 which is just a copy of the first one and with a modified GUI never forget that to create a unique ID for the second version again as we did before let's connect here my complete control and now if we right click you see here also show simulated device connected and show simulated hardware GUI so this is connected you can also use the simulated hardware user interface when the device is actually connected so you can also run both this is the case let's now select the GUI and you see nothing happens why is nothing happening because there's at least a little thing we need to do now code first we need to tell Bitwig the size of the window we want to have or of the device you want to have and if you check out here the function this is here the set physical size this is the method we need to call before a window can show up so let's try that let's create here a new section so the, the fourth thing we need to do is a layout lay out the simulator UI and first thing we want to do is call here this function on our hardware surface so there's a hardware surface go here and let's just say we want to have a size of 800 
to 800. So let's check that out now. Again, it should be automatically reloaded. Um, so we can call that and voila. Here is our hardware window, which is totally empty. I think it's a little bit big. Let's make it a bit smaller here to 200 so it fits better the screen and you see it's empty so we created controls but they do not show up because we need to add them first so if you right click into the window you see uh, you can activate the editing mode so normally the editing is locked so you need to activate it with clicking here the menu and then you get if you right click again into the windows you get more options now we have several stuff we can do as you see there is select back background image we come to that in a second we can say generate control positions code at all controls without position or you can add single controls so if you click that all the controls you created here in your script will be added at once but sometimes if you have a lot of controls in your device it might be a bit of a chaos if we add all at once so sometimes it might be better to add them one after another so but we go here for the full shebang and you see now so here we have our four controls we have uh, created so let's select one you see you can move them around and you can also select single ones you can select multiple ones by pressing here the control key and you can also change the size of the widgets by just moving here the border and you can also change the size of multiple devices at once there is also a hidden feature if you select all of the controls and you want to make this spacing the same for all you can grab the left border of the most right control and then move that so you see it jumped into this thing a word of warning for that if you pick by accident that corner everything will be off screen and crazy so let's just try that let's see you see everything goes away which happens quite often to me so be sure to save your work quite frequently in that case you can simply close the window and open it again and you will be back to normal which in our case means everything is gone so be very careful with that so editing again at all the controls and we have them back again what else can you do let's say you have here now a basic layout you can do whatever you want but what you could do as a tip is that function select background image so the idea is you select a background image of any device and then you can simply lay out the controls on top of this graphic so for example just to give you an idea pick here a picture of the APC you have now the APC and if you would say okay this here is the play button of the APC you could size it like this and put it here over the play button this does not work all the time because sometimes the buttons just get too small or it does not really fit on, on such a user interface but it's a nice starting point but it will not be stored the image and it will be always gone if you reopen it the only idea is to have a little bit of a layout help if you're done with that let's just say okay as an idea this could be maybe here the mark the fader this could be our play button and we have here some controls let's say this is one here absolute one this is our relative knob you have also the align functions here so you can say okay they need to have the same size and you need to align left and then you quickly get to basic layout and if you're done with that you have the other option here to say generate control positions code it will copy the code for the position settings or create the code for these into the clipboard and these can then be inserted into your application so if you want to set here the layout simply enter that and you see it created here now all the code for your devices so you need to adjust here the name and also this is a little bit redundant you normally do not have to get the element because you already have it here so you could if you want replace that with that or at least you need to replace here the hardware surface name or you could rename your hardware surface just surface then it's the same if you then save it and if you now open it again the GUI it looks like uh, the positions we created before and what you now can do you can also use these knobs and sliders and for example we can press our play button and you see the playback stopped press it again you see it starts so it acts exactly like the button we had created last time and used with our keyboard same here for the volume control
control, you see the volume control is working and this is also working, this absolute knob and the relative knob is working as well. This one is for if you activate it then it really sends MIDI and internally processes it and if not it directly executes the attached function which is uh, assigned uh, to the control. We looked now at the input elements and we looked at the editor. There is one input element we have not looked at which is the piano keyboard so we could also create quickly a piano keyboard. So let's add the piano keyboard. Let's say up here create our controls. We also want a piano keyboard. So the keyboard is here. We need here our hardware surface. We also need an ID, the keyboard, very creative. You can say how many keys you want. So let's say we go with 49. This is where it starts, the octave. So let's go for zero on the start key. This is the lowest key. Let's say this is 36 and that's it. So the keyboard is created. And what you need to do with the keyboard is just look at the methods here. So you simply set here the MIDI in, a channel on which you want to send it. You can change the MIDI channel on which it plays. You can say if it's velocity sensitive, so then this is a trick also with touch devices. If you click the, the, the key at the lower part, it plays with a softer velocity. And if you click it on the upper part, it plays with a harder velocity. And you can also save it to ports uh, poly after touch this then also works if you move the mouse over the key so the only thing we need to do is here to set the MIDI input and the MIDI input so this is basically what what instead of the binding we set here the MIDI input and this is what we have called here the MIDI input so this is the port and we need to have here the keyboard so this is the keyboard and yeah, for the layout, we don't need to bind this to an action because this will just simply play and we need to add it to the layout. But for that, we can use uh, the editor again. Keyboard, still a typo. Key, where is it? Difficult word, keyboard. So for, so for that, we can also use the editor again. So go into the editor, show the simulator. You can click now here again, edit, and then say, okay, at the element or at all of our position, it's the same. And there you get here the keyboard. You can also resize that. Let's make that a bit, a bit smaller, move it smaller. Let's move that down here. Normally the controller, the keyboard is at the bottom. Yeah, so it fits nicely. Then you need to go also generate a control position code again. Go into the editor. We just need the keyboard one. Replace the name again. And that's basically it. And if we open it again, we will also have here the keyboard and you see it will not show that you clicked it, but uh, let's have a look here. Add here an instrument, uh, too much choice, whatever, something. And then you should see that it's not that one. Uh, our simulator here, that one, if you play now. Ah, I see, it's not working because we did not create a note input. So we need also to create a note input to make the keyboard work. We should also create a note input port, create note hardware test two. So this is a note input, here we go. That should now appear here. Here is our note input and now this is working as well. Yeah, so there's everything you need to know about the input elements and you know now how you use the editor. And in the next part of the tutorial, we will look at output elements like LED lights on the buttons and also text displays and graphic displays. And until next time, write some funky code.